Despite every smashing ace and grand slam glory of tennis titan Andy Murray, lies a captivating story waiting to be unraveled. So put on your tennis whites and let's take a journey off court into the life of Andy Murray. And don't forget our trivia challenge. Why did Andy Murray get knighted? We'll reveal the answer at the end, so stay tuned. And as always, if this video serves up some tennis joy, volley that like button and backhand a subscribe for more ace-worthy tennis content like this. More than 90% of you amazing spectators aren't subscribed yet, so give it a click and let's get you on our tennis loving team. It all began in Glasgow, Scotland, where Andy was born to Judy and William Murray. Andy's grandfather, Roy Erskine, was a pro footballer in the late 50s, perhaps the origin of the sporting genes in the Murray clan. However, it was tennis, not football, that caught the Murray family's attention. Judy, Andy's mum, led both of her sons onto the tennis court, with Andy picking up his first racket when he was just three. Fun fact. Andy's older brother, Jamie, also makes waves on the double circuit. Talk about a power-packed family. Young Andy, an eager three-year-old, was nudged towards tennis by his mother. By the age of five, he was already a participant in competitive tournaments. Our Murray Kane's life wasn't always grand slams and glory. He experienced traumatic events like the 1996 Dunblane School Massacre, where he and his brother took cover in a classroom. Fast forward a few years, Andy had to face the divorce of of his parents when he was just 10. The boys stayed with their father but continued to receive tennis mentorship from their mother. These hardships fueled Andy's competitive spirit turning life's lemons into Grand Slam lemonade. Andy's off-court life is as impressive as his on-court exploits. He is a dedicated family man, married to Kim Sears since 2015. They are proud parents of four adorable children, a son and three daughters, the youngest of whom was born in March 2021. Their family home, a newly constructed haven in Leatherhead, stands as proof of their love and dedication. Tweeting about his whirlwind parents parenting experience, Sir Andy jests, little parenting tip for any new parents out there. Don't have four of them. With his usual wit, he serves a humorous slice of life advice. Picture this, in February 2013, Andy Murray decided to switch from his tennis whites to a tycoon suit. With a cool 1.8 million pounds jingling in his pocket, he set his sights on Cromlick's house, a hotel near Dunblane. Now, this wasn't just any old property. This charming venue held a special place in the Murray family family album as a backdrop to his brother Jamie's 2010 wedding. Talk about keeping it in the family. After spending a king's ransom, he then closed the doors, rolled up his sleeves and set to work making the hotel fit for, well, a tennis king. Oh, how's that for a pickup? What a shot! A moment of absolute magic from Murray. With a bit of elbow grease and likely a lot more of that 1.8 million pounds, the once quaint Cromlick's house emerged from its chrysalis in April 2014 as a fully revamped 15 room, five star hotel ready to serve pun intended, it's high profile guests. Just imagine, one day you're playing a gruelling five setter on the Wimbledon centre court and the next you're worrying about bed linen thread counts and the perfect fluffiness of croissants for breakfast. Is there any end to the Murray Kane's talents? Now let's talk about Andy's fascinating journey through the world of endorsements. In 2009 he signed a five year deal with German manufacturer Adidas worth 30 million pounds. This didn't just include wearing Adidas's range of tennis shoes, but also kept his shirt sleeve sponsors Shiatsi Chen, Royal Bank of Scotland and Highland Spring. At the end of their contract, Adidas decided not to re-sign with Andy, and he then stepped into a four-year partnership with athletic apparel company Under Armour in December 2014, reportedly worth $25 million. But as they say, change is the only constant. 
From 2019, he started sporting gear from Castor, terming the deal as his last before his anticipated retirement announcement. In the world of tennis, the racket is as crucial as the knight's sword. Andy endorses the head radical pro model, although the racket model he uses underneath the paint job is reportedly a customized pro stock PT57A, derived from the original Pro Tour 630 model. However, a 2007 wrist injury led to a modification in its weight setup. And let's not forget the wrist that wields the racket. On Andy's wrist, you will find the Swiss watch manufacturer Rado's D Star 200 model, an endorsement deal he signed in June 2012. Andy's heart is as grand as his serve. He's a founding member of Malaria No More UK Leadership Council and has been instrumental in raising awareness and funds to help fight malaria. His charitable endeavors extend beyond health as well. In fact, he was invested in up to 30 UK businesses using Cedars, a crowdfunding platform. And he is not just playing the game, he's also helping others level up. Like every champion, Andy Murray has faced his fair share of adversities, not all of them on the tennis court. A particularly challenging one is a rare physical condition he was born with known as bipartite patella. This medical condition occurs when the kneecap, also known as the patella, remains as two separate bones instead of fusing together during early childhood as is typical. Bipartite patella is uncommon, affecting less than 2% of the general population. It's more frequently found in males and often occurs in both knees. Generally, the condition is asymptomatic, but it can sometimes cause pain and discomfort, especially during high intensity activities like professional sports. That's why for athletes like Murray, this condition can cause some hurdles. Despite the discomfort, Murray has shown immense resilience, battling the occasional pain flare-ups and still managing to maintain an incredibly successful tennis career. The year 2021 also presented its set of challenges. Incredible stuff here from Murray. So dialed in. Before his trip to Melbourne for the Australian Open, Murray tested positive for COVID-19 and had to quarantine at home, missing the tournament. But as always, Andy displayed his resilience. In the same year, the Murray clan welcomed their fourth child, with Kim giving birth in March. Just a few weeks after this joyful event, Andy had to withdraw from the Dubai Duty Free Tennis Championships to be with his family. In the same vein of devotion, He's reported to have flown back home immediately after his trainers and wedding ring were stolen from underneath his car at the hotel car park during the Indian Wells Tennis Championships. Thankfully, they were returned in time for his first competitive match at Indian Wells in four years. So there you have it, an in-depth sneak peek into the off-court life of Andy Murray, the man who aced both the tennis court and life itself. Oh, and for those of you who've been holding your breath for the trivia answer, remember our Scottish tennis whiz, Andy Murray? Well, he's no longer just Andy, he's Sir Andy now. On a day as regal as his backhand, he received his knighthood from none other than Prince Charles, making the palace his new center court. This honor, a Grand Slam in itself, was served for his contributions to tennis and his charity work. On receiving his knighthood, the newly dubbed knight beams, I'm very proud to receive it. It's a nice day to spend with my family, showing us that whether he's on the court or in the palace, he remains our down-to-earth, family-loving Andy. A knight with a racket indeed. And that, my friends, is game, set and match for this episode of Glam Slam Tennis. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a moment of the action and what we have in store. Until next time, stay fabulous and ace those serves.